Hey everybody, welcome to your weekly energy update for the week of November 6th through November 13th. And this week we do have the full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus, and that's going to be happening on November 8th. So uh, some information on that, of course, whenever we have a full moon, we do talk about kind of an unveiling and letting go type of ceremony. So the full moon is at its fullest at actually 4.01 a.m. Mountain Time on November 8th. So you want to do like your releasing ceremony, your unveiling and letting go type of activity and energy eight hours before then. So you get it all set up. It's almost like you're prepackaging what you're ready to release. You go through whatever you want to do. You can like like list 10 things that you want to release uh, around these energies and then they will start falling away. Now you can choose anything to release around, you know, a full moon. But if you do zero in on the energies of the sign, then that does help out as well. So like Taurus, and I'll probably pop up just a little uh, slide here so you could see those if you want to screenshot them. But it is about like grounding this and things that make you secure, uh, things that are our source of confidence. Uh, perseverance is a good energy. What do we need to persevere around? Uh, finances and abundance, of course, is also around Taurus energy. Uh, hard work, creativity, where can we use that in our life? Simplification is great. There's also dependency, codependency, independence, those kind of themes around that. And of course, eating and cooking are also around that. And the Taurian energy, because it is ruled by Venus, it does have some emotions and sensitivities or living through your senses around there as well. And of course, the Taurus bull, the resistance, the stubbornness <laughs> comes into play. Now, the uh, Taurus zodiac, that sign rules over the neck, the throat, the voice, the vocal cords and the thyroid. So if you have anything around those, you can also bring those into this type of unveiling and letting go ceremony. So those are the energies that you want to focus on around that. And then of course, the lunar eclipse, I did talk about eclipses uh, last week and the week before. So if you want to check out those videos, I do go into more about eclipses, but it is about change. It is about uh, sudden change and kind of sometimes life altering situations come up during an eclipse. And the total lunar eclipse does happen at right around the time of the fullest. It starts like at four um, AM mountain time. And we should probably see that in most places in the world, but always check out the internet to see what time it's going to be in your area. So if you want to be up watching that eclipse, uh, you can do that. So wonderful information here. Use that, you know, beautiful energies around this full moon that is expanding all the energies that we're feeling and all the emotions we're feeling in the moment. So focus on what you do want to grow and what you're thankful for in your life uh, more than focusing on what you don't want in your life and what you, um, you know, or feel like you're lacking in your life you know, use as much energy as you can during this full moon for the opposite. Of course, when you're doing the unveiling and letting go ceremony, you can write down like uh, just, uh, you know, thank you for uh, bringing to me, unveiling this thing around this situation in my life and uh, aiding me in letting it go. I mean, you can write it out and even say it out loud as you write out the 10 things and that helps with all that release. So that is the little skinny on the Taurus energy. For this reading, we're, of course, I'm going to pull a reading for each individual zodiac sign. And we're going to be asking just what are we resistant to letting go that's in our best interest to release. And so we're going to ask that for each sign. We're jumping into your sign right now. Right, Aquarius, this is your weekly energy update. We're going to start off by pulling a card here from the Wild Unknown deck, the Animal Spirit uh, deck. 
and all the cards I use in a reading I do list in the description box below so if any of them catch your eye and you want them for yourself you know where you can pick those up. So let's take a look here and see where in your life Aquarius can you use some release? All right. <laughs> so I'll put that back up here. Let's see. So you've actually got the buffalo. Beautiful card there. We'll put them right here. Love the pink matching the higher heart chakra. And let's see what comes in here. So we got the buffalo. This is grounded yet heavenly practical yet spiritual so what a wonderful grounding taurian type of energy right and it says the hooves of the mighty buffalo are grounded in the earth yet its heart and mind rise toward heaven the buffalo sees challenge hardship or a bump in the road as an opportunity for upliftment therefore the buffalo does not fear death illness or misfortune its gentle eyes look to the road ahead, trusting every turn. May we all experience this elusive yet life-changing bliss from time to time. And may we allow this card to remind us that life is a precious gift. Because when we're in balance with this energy, we are trusting, we have pure presence. When we're out of balance with this energy, then we're I'm sorry, restless and we lack gratitude. So to bring in th uh, this energy into balance, prayer and bhakti uh, is what is recommended. So what we are ready, you know, what spirit feels that we could, maybe we're resistance to letting go of, is some of our fear that is bringing in this feeling of that lack and that feeling of not having gratitude towards something, right? So there's something that we feel isn't happening fast enough or is in our life that we don't want to have in our life. And so this trust is coming in. We're also going to pull here from the wild unknown tarot deck and see what else the spirit would like to add in. Time. All right, so what else would you like Aquarius to know, please? All right, oh, that's too many. <laughs> All right, there we go. What else? Okay, so we got these, and then they do want the one from the bottom. All right. So let's take a look here. The first card that came out is the Son of Pentacles, which is the Knight of Pentacles in the Standard Tarot. And so this is about all knights go on a quest, right? And so this is a quest for worth as in relation to the outside world because they're in search of this Ace of Pentacles, which does represent like new opportunities, but new growth. But with the, you know, the gratitude kind of theme here about focusing on what you're grateful for. There is this uh, challenge that comes in with looking to the outside world. And when we look to the outside world, the disappointment that comes in that when we're trying to use it to define ourselves. And that's where the lack of gratitude comes in is because we are looking either for relationships or situations like job, education, social status, or our bodies, our bank accounts, our possessions to define our worth. And when we look outside of that, it always is going to feel we're lacking somewhere. And that's what draws us into that energy of not having gratitude because we're focusing on what we feel is missing, right? Well, this is about the transformation of trust. And in addition, the Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving out of the four knights because uh, they're all about movement, but this is slow movement because that's the outside world. So it moves very, it has three seasons for spring, three, you know, months for uh, summer, three months for autumn, three months for winter. So it's very trusting time and trusting that the outside world 
unfolds very specifically, right? And so there is that trust that's coming in here too, that trusting the timing of things, trusting the outcomes will happen exactly in order. So let's see what else they have here too. Yeah, you got the judgment card. Judgment card is calling from the higher self. And so this did talk about one foot on the ground and one foot looking into the heavens, right? That we're grounded, yet you're looking also um, to higher things. And so your higher self is calling you to connect higher and more consistently with them in the upper realms and having this beautiful balance between like it says, it's almost like, and it's very Aquarian energy. Sometimes um, like Pisces is the final, you know, the 12th suit before it starts back at Aries again and goes all the way back around. And sometimes Pisces will be so heavenly minded. It's like they have both feet up in the heavens in the spiritual realm. And Aquarius is kind of known to have one foot on the ground and one foot in the heavens. And this is that balancing that's coming in because 20 and X and an X, 10 and 10 on either side, this balancing of the heavens and the earth. Yeah, because you have death. So you have definitely have a, an ending and a new beginning that's coming in here. Um, and you might get news of it this week, but you might have this information that's coming in during this week that is this inkling of the ending and the new beginning where this trust comes in. Thing, something in the outside world is being removed to make space for the new thing to come in. And I kind of feel like it's like, if you ever see like they're, um, they take down an old building, it takes time to take the rubble away and then the new, the new stuff starts construction and then it moves and it's like, okay, it's not an overnight thing. It does take time for this, for this ending and this new beginning to happen and it's all right. You can trust it, but you know, the two X's here too, double endings and double new beginnings. Endings in the physical world, a ending in the spiritual world, a new beginning in the physical world, and a new beginning in the spiritual world. So you do have this change that's coming and sparking during this energy, which you are, like we're resistant to letting things go. So it's like, let it go. And, uh, it makes room for the new thing coming in. But if we're holding on and holding on to the, the bones, then we don't get the new thing, right? <laughs> so I like that. And then you have the Ace of Swords. So Aces are new beginnings. Swords, this is the, um, you know, connecting to the higher realms because that's what the Ace of Swords does. It allows you to connect to the capital T truths of the higher realm, those that are rooted in the unconditional love. It also allows you to cut away those old thoughts and those old beliefs that are no longer serving you. So, you know, being an air sign, you do have a lot of your mind. You do have a lot of your thoughts and your beliefs and your mindsets that you get really attached to, which if it's the small T truths that are rooted in those fears of losing conditional love, that's what's, you know, drawing you there. But I feel like this is all about a higher way of thinking and approaching and looking at things. So I like it. Yep. And then you have the Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands is about messages from above. You know, Wands is drive, ambition, passion, inspiration, that as well. But for you, with all this spiritual connection, with this, you know, nudge to really look at things from up above, when you do, you do get all these messages that come in from all over the place from spirit, from the outside world, from you, in you emotionally through your heart, things just being dropped into your mind, uh, you know, like everywhere. You're just, if you're opening up to this and you are connecting to your higher self, you are definitely going to be getting these very clear messages this week, especially. But I feel like this is going to be something that's going to be ongoing with this change of mindsets um, as well. And then you have the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands is this message, too, of, you know, that you don't have to um, defend yourself. Like your light is going to shine and there's going to be some people here that are going to try to uh, not purposely, you know, either, but it's like they, they are 
pointing out your brightness, pointing out this, you know, the shining, the glowing that happens when you move into the gratitude and the connection to the upper world. And they already feel like they're down below and low. And when you almost, it feels like you rise and, and go into the limelight a little bit and, you know, see how the light is shining in the darkness. Others are like, why are you shining so bright? Get back down here and be miserable with the rest of us. But try to have compassion on them because what is happening is that they feel like they're going even lower because they think you're going up higher and higher. So if you can do anything to reach down and help draw them upward with you, that'll help in this manner too. But just try to have compassion and not take it personally when people say things um, towards you. All right. We're also going to pull from the Oracle of E and see what else that they have for you today. So what else for our Aquarius, please? All right. So this is your card. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. I love these cards, they're so funny. So card number 52, the 52nd week, right? Makes a year, usually. So endings and new beginnings, making themselves known once more. Yeah, and the Hasta la Vista baby, right? So <laughs> remember that song Queen Elsa sings in the Disney movie Frozen when she unleashes her magic? Well, if you didn't catch this animated flick, it's time to let it go walk away just like you never look back at the trash can you leave at the curb don't give it a second glance it's time for new beginnings out with the old and in with the new okay <laughs> you can't make that up so definitely uh there is this endings and new beginnings that are coming in because we've talked about that over and over again with all these cards so i do love that and then your final card is going to come from the high vibe deck and let's see what their final message for this week is for you all right so what's your final message for aquarius for this reading please Aquarius. Okay, looks like you get two. So let's put these over here. And the first one is flow. Go with the flow. And it says the more you resist the current of change, the harder the current pushes. If you hold on to the grass on the side of the river, not wanting to move, you will be battered by the strong current. If you float in the middle of the river, the current is gentle and you float easily downstream. So aim for the path of least resistance. Go with the flow. <laughs> Great advice, right? With this change that's coming here, just go with it. And then you've got music. And that says, turn on music you love and notice the change in your body. So yeah, allow, I kind of feel like, you know, as you're going with the flow, put on this flowing music. What's going to be the soundtrack of this adventure that you're having? Is it going to be, you know, a really uh, upbeat or, you know, beautiful flowing song as it's happening? Or is it going to be, uh, you know, holding on and, uh, you know, a really tense, you know, music that's happening. What music is going to play here with you, this unfolding of this new adventure? You get to choose. Is it going to be something where you're battered on the side by resistance to going with the change of this flow? Or, or the flow of the change, I should say. Or is it going to be this beautiful just peaceful movement as things move out and things move in. It's going to be flowing or not. It's up to you. And I love it. <laughs> There's no wrong. They just are, feel differently. They sound differently, right? But you get to choose. And I love it. Right, Aquarius, if you're looking for more messages of love from above, in addition to these weekly energy updates, I also put out monthly readings for each individual zodiac sign 
and a few other types of videos. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those and get notified immediately when they become available, if you give this video a little thumbs up by clicking the like button, and then clicking the subscribe button gives you access to the notification bell. And when you go in there, there's an all option. If you select that, it does two things. One, of course, it tells you when new videos come out immediately, but it also will tell you when I'm going live each day uh, for live readings on YouTube. I know I go every single evening at 7 p.m. Mountain Time and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. So if you haven't stopped by to check it out, I'd love to see you. And also doing those things I mentioned helps spread the Zen love and it does help my channel grow in significant ways. Because when you like or share one of my videos, comment on one of my videos, subscribe to my channel, Doing those things makes the YouTube algorithm so giddy happy it wants to automatically share my videos with other people as well. So if you feel inspired to do those things, any of those things, I am very, very grateful. And these are general readings. If you're looking for more specific information and answers for your specific life, I do offer personal readings. And all that information is listed in the description box of the video below. All right, Aquarius, as you're going through this week, please know that every second of every day of your life that you are unconditionally loved by the mother and father of all things. And of course, I love you too. Have an amazing week. We'll be talking soon. In the meantime, you hang in there and you take care.